Zeneca On the shortness of life Life is long if you know how to use it Why do we complain about nature? She has acted kindly Life is long if you know how to use it But one man is gripped by insatiable greed Another by a laborious dedication to useless task one man is soaked in wine, another sluggish with idleness. One man is worn out by political ambition, which is always at the mercy of the judgment of others. Another, through hope of profit, is driven headlong over all lands and seized by the greed of trading. Some are tormented by a passion of for army life, always intent on inflicting dangers on others or anxious about danger to themselves. Some are worn out by the self-imposed servitude of thankless attendance on the great. Many are occupied by either pursuing other people's money or complaining about their own. Many pursue no fixed goal but are tossed about in ever-changing designs by a fickleness which is shifting in instant and never satisfied with, themse with itself. Some have no aims at all for their life's course but death takes them unawares as they yawn languidly. So much that I cannot doubt the truth of that oracular remark of the greatest of poets. It is a small part of life we really live. Indeed, all the rest is not life but merely time. Vices surround and assail men from every side and do not allow them to rise again and lift their eyes to discern the truth but keep them overwhelmed and rooted in their desires. Never can they recover their true selves. If by chance they achieve some tranquility, just as swell remains on the deep sea even after the wind has dropped, so they go on tossing about and never find rest from their desires. Do you think I am speaking only of those whose wickedness is acknowledged? Look at those those good fortune people gather to see. They are choked with their own blessings. How many find their riches a burden? How many burst a blood vessel by their eloquence and their daily striving to show off their talents? How many are pale from constant, ple constant pleasures? How many are left no freedom by the crowd of clients surrounding them? In a word, run through them all, from lowest to highest. One calls for legal assistance, another comes to help. One is on trial, another defends him, another gives a judgment. No one makes his claim to himself, but each is exploited of another's sake. Ask about those whose names are learned by heart, and you will see that they have these distinguishing marks. X cultivates Y, and Y cultivates Z. No one bothers about himself. Again, certain people reveal the most stupid indignation. They complain about the pride of their superiors because they did not have time to give them an audience when they wanted one. But can anyone dare to complain about another's pride when he himself never has time for himself?